Alkynes, triple bonds with the general formula CnH2n. Now we've got to take away basically four hydrogens from a saturated molecule. You know what I'm talking about. To make this unsaturated one with a triple bond. And so that's going to be CnH2n minus 2. Okay, that's general formula. So, two carbons long, two hydrogens at either end with a triple bond in between. So what's that going to be? Well, 2 is F, of course. By the way, there, obviously there can't be a methene or a methine because you can't have a double and triple bond going to nothing. So here is the first in the series of the alkynes, and it's ethine. Right? So the next one would be, well, this is the next stuff after the next one. One, two, three, four. That's going to be a bute, but I put the triple bond after the second carbon, not after the first, so it's bute. Bute who? Well, it's bute, and we've got the ein after the second carbon, so it's a two, bute two, ein, right? Yeah, and that's what that is. But this next one, a little more complicated, right? This is, woo, this big. Okay, longest continuous chain of carbons. Where is it? <sighs> Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven. So it's a hepti... No. Look. The triple bond then would be in a branch, and that's not allowed. The longest continuous chain must have the multiple bond in it. So therefore, this is going to be... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, doesn't matter. But 6 is the longest continuous chain because it has to have the multiple bond, right? So that's going to be a, a hex with the ene at the 1, so all you have to say is hexene. It's okay, you don't have to go hex 1 ene, that's all right. Now, there's two branches. Where are the branches? Here and here. So if that's the hex, <laughs> hex, e hex ene. Come on, chem guy. It's an ein. He caught that. Now, there is your longest continuous chain. Here are your two branches. These are ethyl branches, right? And these ethyls are attached where? Well, we started here with the triple bond, so we, we've decided that that's the one. That makes this the two. So therefore, there's an ethyl at the two and an ethyl at the four. So it's two, four. How many ethyls? Diethyl. Ethyl hexane, one word. 2,4-diethyl hexane, that's how you do it. Okay, here's a beauty. Yikes! You're just having fun now, chem guy. What's all this about? No, you got to know how to do that one. There's two double bonds in this molecule. How do you name it? Well, if you said that this would be a dibutene, that wouldn't be good. Because you don't have two dibutes, right? You have two enes. You have two multiple bonds, two double bonds. So how are you going to be able to name that? You're going to say, well, okay, there's two enes. So that's a diene in a four-carbon chain, which is a bute. So this is going to be bute. Now, because the next, the next word that we have is going to have a consonant in it, we, instead of a vowel, uh, to make it flow, it's buta, okay? So it's buta what? Well, there's a double bond at the one and the three. So it's a, get, okay, get ready. It's a buta one comma three hyphen what? Two enes, diene. Buta one three diene. It used to actually be called one three buta diene. They separated the numbers and the, and the, and the letters. It flowed nicer. But this actually explains it better, I guess. <laughs> now, there's something else that you got to remember <clears throat> about when you start building molecules of, of things like alkanes, uh, enes, and ines. And that's their shapes. And we talked about the tetrahedral nature uh, around the carbons for all the alkanes. Well, what's going to happen when you have a double bond? Well, you're going to have this. There's your C2H4. We're going back to a ene. This is an ethene. There's your double bond in the middle represented with springs. Cool, hey? Now, remember what the shape is? This has, this carbon atom has one, two, three effective pairs around it. Whenever you have three effective pairs around a central atom, you've got yourself a trigonal planar shape. Remember that? So this is trigonal planar around this one and that one too. So there's two trigonal planars here, bi-trigonal planar if you will, two trigonal planars. But of course, if you have a triple bond, 
and two carbons, you're going to have this type of shape right here, where you've got the triple bond, and that is going to be a, as obvious, linear shape. But why again? This carbon right here, and this one as well, but they're both central atoms. That carbon has how many effective pairs? Should have mentioned it with the other one. When you have a multiple bond, bond, you count it as one effective pair. That's one effective pair there, and one here for a total of two. Whenever you have two effective pairs, that's linear.